Hey, fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. This is the ASVAB Mathematical Knowledge Placement Exam. So the math test you have to take to get into the military. There are two math tests in the ASVAB. The first is arithmetic reasoning. That's actually a lot of reading comprehension. And then the second one is mathematical knowledge where you really need to know a lot of formulas. I think there are about 15 problems here. I'll put a link to this test in the description. I would pause the videos, work out of a notebook, do the problems before I do them, and then watch how I solve the test. This is part of a final exam for a foundations in math class that I've created and put online. It is part of my channel. I'll put a link to all of those videos and the playlist in the description. So this class is really designed to help people succeed in union math entry exams, military math entry exams, contractors math exam, if you have a bunch of holes in your math education, this course is designed to help you build a solid foundation so you can progress and move forward and do well on any of those tests. So with all that said, let me go ahead and get started. Um, again, pause the video, have a notebook out. I'll also refer back to the chapters in the course edits there. Do the problem before I do them uh, and then see how I do them. Okay, number one, mathematical knowledge. This is 10 factorial. That exclamation point doesn't mean 10. It means 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 all the way down. And then 7 factorial below it. So the way you do this problem is you write it out, not all the way down, but just to the denominator. So I'm just going to write that 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial. And I'm going to keep that as 7 factorial. And then I can see this is 7 times 6 times 5. All those numbers will cancel with all those numbers, and I'm left with only a 10 times 9 times an 8. You should be able to do this pretty quick in your head. 8 times 9 is 72. 72 times 10 is 720. My answer is right there, answer D. Always a tip and a trick to these problems, and hopefully watching me do enough of these will help you learn those tips and tricks. Okay, problem number two is really about exponents. I think that's uh, chapter five or so. Um, this is a question about the rules of exponents. So I'm going to keep that six to the fourth on top. The rule down here is you add the exponent. So I have six to the third times six squared. They have the same base, different exponents. So I add the three and the two to get six to the fifth. So I have six to the fifth on the bottom. And then the next rule of exponents is you subtract the exponents when the bases are the same. So that gives me a 6 to the 4 minus 5, 6 to the negative 1. And there it is right there. That is also the equivalent of 1, 6. Number 3 right here is a square root. Um, this is saying what times itself is equal to the number. So the square root of 64 is saying what times itself is equal to 64. Well, that could be an 8 or a negative 8. But this is now a cube root. That little three says not times itself, but times itself three times. So I got to just kind of through trial and error figure out what number times itself times itself is equal to 64. I'll just start with two, two times two, four times two, eight, way too low. Three times three, nine times three, 27, way too low. Four times four, 16. 16 times 4 is 64. So I could see 4 times itself three times, or 4 to the third is 64. 4 to the third, the cube root of that, the cubes cancel, and it leaves me with 4. So my answer is B right there. Problem number four is order of operations. The rule for this is PEMDAS, parentheses first, then exponents, multiplication and division, and then addition subtraction from left to right. So I'm going to do the parentheses first, and I'm going to do that square root. So square root of 16 is 4, right? We said square root is something times itself equals that number. So I have 2 times 5 minus 4 divided by 14 minus 12. That's a 2 times a 3. And I still have to do these parentheses. 5 minus 4 is 1, so I have 2 times 1 divided by 2 times 3. It's all multiplication division. I work left to right. 2 divided by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. My answer is A, 3 right there. A little algebra review right here. You have to get the variables by themselves. 
Uh, there's only one variable, A, so I'm going to get all of those A's on the one side and numbers by themselves, and I'm going to divide through to get the solution. So I have a 3A and a 2A added together to give me 5A. So I'm going to subtract 5A from both sides. 7A minus 5A gives me 2A. Then I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. Those will cancel. Only thing I have on the left is that 2A. Negative 5 minus 2 is negative 7. Divide both sides by 2. Negative, whoops, divide by a 2. Negative divided by a positive is a negative. These cancel. A is by itself. Negative 7 divided by 2 has to be a negative. 2 will go in there 3 with 1 left over, or 3 and a half, and it's a negative, so it's negative 3 and a half. Number 6, solve for x. First thing you want to do is distribute the 5 through the quantity, both the 2x and the negative 1, keeping track of that negative, and then distribute the 3 through the quantity. So that's going to give you 5 times 2x, 10x, minus 1 times 5, minus 5, is equal to 3 times the 4, 12x, and then 3 times the 3 is 9. I'm going to get all the x's on one side, all the numbers on the other side. You could do a lot of different ways. I kind of like to stick with a positive x, so I'm going to subtract 10x from both sides, giving me a 2x over here, and then I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides to get negative 5 plus a negative 9 is negative 14. Divide both sides by the 2. That'll give me x by itself. Negative divided by positive is a negative, and that's going to give me negative 7. So x is equal to negative 7. Number 7 says evaluate the expression. That means um, there's no equal sign, so there's nothing you could do uh, except plug in values and, and, and evaluate it. So I have a value for x, a value for y. I could just you know, open that whole thing up, or I could just plug these values in right away right here. X is equal to 0, it goes in there. Y is equal to 3, it goes in there. So 0 plus 3, parentheses before exponents, is 3. 3 to the third power is 3, 9, 27. So I have 27 minus 5 times x. Well, x is 0 plus 7 times y, and y is 3. So 27, 5 times 0 is 0, plus 21 is going to give me 48. There's my answer, answer A. Number 8 is an inequality, meaning it's not an equal sign. It's less than or equal to, and I need to solve that, meaning get x by itself. The key rule on this is when you multiply or divide by a negative, you switch the sign. But uh, I'm not going to end up doing that here. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. I'm also going to subtract 3 from both sides. That and that will cancel. 6x minus 3x is 3x. I have that less than or equal sign. 3x minus 3x cancels. And then negative 3 minus negative 3 is negative 6. I divide both sides by a 3. I am not dividing by a negative, so I have x is less than or equal to negative divided by a positive, negative 2. x is less than or equal to negative 2. Answer B. Number 9, what is the name of a quadrilateral? Quad is, like, like right of the quad, has four wheels, four-sided figure with four equal sides. So I have four sides. They're all equal. They don't actually have to be right angles. Um, it's going to be a rhombus. So the correct answer here, it's really just knowing vocabulary is going to be a rhombus. Okay, number 10, a 55-degree angle is, probably best to use a process of elimination here, a right angle. Well, right angle is exactly 90. 55 is not exactly 90. An acute angle, an acute angle is something less than 90. So that is the correct answer. An obtuse angle is something greater than 90. An exterior angle is if I had a triangle this way, this would be an exterior angle of it. The only answer that makes sense is an acute angle less than 90 degrees. Really more math vocabulary here. Number 11, an isosceles triangle. By definition, an isosceles has two equal sides and um, two equal angles. Has no equal sides, that doesn't make sense. Has two equal angles, that is true, because if the sides are equal, the angles opposite them are. Has no acute angles, that is not true. Those could be 60s has two obtuse angles, that's impossible, remembering that obtuse is greater than 90. 
So that's impossible, so it's answer B. Number 12, the side of an equilateral triangle. Equilateral, lat means side, equal means the same. So all three of these are the same. Again, kind of a vocab question if you know what equilateral means. One side is 20 centimeters. Its perimeter, the distance all the way around the outside, is 20 plus 20 plus 20, or 60 centimeters right there. Number 13, the area of a rectangle is 144 square inches. So base times height is going to be 144. The length of the rectangle is 16. What is its width? So 16 times what is going to equal 144? I could grab these numbers and plug them in and see 9 looks pretty close. 9 times 10 is 90 plus 54 is 144. So my answer is 9 inches. Number 14, the circumference of a circle, that's perimeter, the distance around the outside, is equal to 10, whoops, 10 pi. Its radius is, so you need to know the equation for circumference. Circumference is equal to 2 times 2 times pi times r, kind of messy there. So if circumference is 2 pi r and the circumference is equal to 10 pi, they have to be equal to each other. So I set the 2 pi r equal to the circumference given. I want to know what the radius is. I'm going to divide both sides by 2 pi. These will cancel. Those will cancel, giving me radius by itself. If I do that to the right side, I also have to do it to the left side. These pi's cancel. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So my radius is equal to 5. Let me double check my units. Circumference is given in centimeters, so my answer should be centimeters. And there's my answer there, 5 centimeters. You see why this is called mathematical knowledge. You need to know all those vocabs of the different triangles. Um, you need to know the equation for circumference. And then a little bit of math to solve it once you understand what the question is asked. You know, math isn't really that hard. I mean, I know it seems hard. The reason why it's hard is so cumulative based on the previous unit. So if you've got missing pieces, it's really hard to sort out. Uh, and that's what this whole course is about. I do a quick two chapters on geometry and going over these terms. But once you know the terms, it's pretty easy to figure out what they're asking and how to do these problems. Okay, number 15, how much will it cost to paint a circular patio with a radius of seven meters? if the cost of the paint is $2 per square meter. So I gotta figure out the total area of that circle because I'm gonna paint it. Area is pi r squared. r is seven, I take that seven, I plug it in there. Seven squared is 49. And then pi is about three, 3.14. So I'm actually gonna round that up a little bit. That 49, I'm gonna round up to 50. 40, 7 times 7 is 49, I'm going to round that up to 50, and I'm going to round that down to 3. So the area is approximately 3 times 50, or 150 square meters. So that's the area of that circle. It's not, it's not right, but it's an approximation. I'm going to compare it to all the different answers. 150 square meters, and then it's $2 per square meter. So I take that 150 times a 2, and I get 300. I did quite a bit of rounding to do it in my head. But as I look up here, there's nothing even close except answer A, which is $308. That's a good problem right there because there's quite a few tricks in that one. Last problem, number 16. If you need a channel, think about subscribing. Go to the description. Um, find the links in there, links to the whole course if you want to watch them. Again, I have this as part of the final exam. First, we did arithmetic reasoning. I broke that in two videos. This is mathematical knowledge. Uh, the test is there. The whole course is there. So if you're missing a lot of the geometry problems, go back and watch the chapters on geometry. Do some of those problems. I'd have a notebook for this whole course. Take notes. Do the problems all kind of sequentially through there. So all your work's in front of you. All right, last problem here. A rectangular box has a length of 7 feet and a width of 3 feet. So this is feet, one tick mark, and a height of 2 feet, so like a depth going back is two feet deep, what is the volume? What's well, going to be the area of the base times the depth? Seven times three is 21. Feet times feet is square feet. Times the depth of two feet. So now I have feet times feet times feet, or cubic feet. So I can know this one's wrong right there because that's square feet. And then I have 21 times two, 42 cubic feet. 
There's my answer right there. A bit of a distractor if you didn't keep track of the units. Um, also another kind of tip or trick. If I had a guess on this one, I would have had a guess. One of these two, and I know I'm talking about volume, so I, I know it had to be that one as well. So uh, if you have any questions at all, please post them in the comments. I'll answer them as soon as I can. I appreciate you watching. I'm hoping this will help you perform better on standardized math exams. Uh, I feel like if you go back and fill in some of those pieces, math will start making a lot more sense. So I appreciate you watching. Thank you.